The brand new Mavic Mini lives up to its name. DJI, world leader in camera drones, tries the balancing act between offering a drone with a semi-professional, fully stabilized camera on the one hand side, while at the same time making it so very lightweight that it can be flown without a registration. Because in most countries, including the United States, drones that weigh more than 250 grams need to be registered. And that is why the DJI Mavic Mini weighs 249 grams. You buy it you fly it. Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Today with a brand new episode, I am proud to introduce the Mavic Mini to you. It is DJI's latest and smallest drone ever. It is actually so tiny, so very small, that it looks like a toy. The question now is, can a toy drone, I don't know what to call it yet, can a toy drone deliver aerials both photos and videos that are usable, or is it really just a gimmick? Let's take a closer look at this drone right here and right now. A product link can be found in the description right below this video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up, and of course, don't forget to subscribe to never again miss any of my upcoming episodes. Okay, the unboxing first, but let's get this done quickly. First of all, you get a nice durable fabric transportation case. Next, the drone itself, of course. Not to forget about the remote control. As well as a set of batteries. And with the batteries, a multiple charger. And of course, a USB wall charger and USB cables to connect everything. Spare propellers are included as well. And a tiny screwdriver to replace them. Now talking about propellers for indoor flights, they even include propeller guards. Just as different cables to connect all sorts of smartphones to the remote. Next, a whole bunch of papers. Last but not least, they include something pretty fancy, a so-called DIY kit. It is actually pretty cool. Inside, you find stickers and pens and you can create designs to pimp your drone. Just paint and draw and get creative and afterward attach the stickers to your drone's shell. It's pretty fancy schmancy and makes your drone stand out. Before we fly the drone and look at the footage, let's firstly talk specs. The drone with a battery inserted weighs only 249 grams. That is one of its main purchasing arguments as you won't have to register this model in most countries including the US. The drone measures approximately 14 by 8.2 by 5.7 centimeters when being folded. That means that I can place it on a regular iPhone. That is how small it is. You can literally fit it into every backpack and even into your pocket. It is so small, you just slip it in and boom ka you're ready to take it anywhere. The size is really pretty darn amazing. Fully extended, it measures 24.5 by 29 by 5.5 centimeters. The drone is made out of standard plastic. It is by far not as durable as the other Mavic models and that is because DJI had to pick light materials to avoid reaching the 250 grams weight limit. I actually assume that DJI fought a hard battle with keeping the weight low. That is why you will find plenty openings in the shell that not only cool down the electronics but that also reduce the weight. You should keep in mind though that the openings are a considerable downside when flying in the rain. I would altogether avoid it if possible. The Mavic Mini has both a single compass and a single IMU installed. The low weight kept DJI from working with backup units as they would usually do. It is nice to see that DJI took care of the cables. All visible ones are protected by fabric so that they won't get damaged while folding the arms of the drone. In the back, users find a Status LED as well as a microSD card slot. Right next to it, a USB connector. And above all of them is a large battery slot. The propellers are made out of standard flexible plastic. They are pretty tiny and it actually takes eight of them to operate the drone. Two per motor. Unfortunately, and this is a downside, you don't have some kind of a quick replacement mechanism. Instead, you always need to use a small screwdriver in case you want to replace a propeller. 
I would not say that I'm disappointed about this because that's the standard with miniature drones, but I'm used to DJI setting new standards instead of complying to old ones. The noise check of the propellers though came to an unexpected but positive result. The volume was at an acceptable level and the pitch was not too annoying compared to other miniature drones that often sound like angry mosquitoes that are about to attack you, while now the Mavic Mini has more the tone of, I would say, a humble bee. Let's right now take a look at the camera. Firstly, I want to notify you about something. Maybe you can see how windy it is here. Even though I have like half a ton of hairspray in my hair, my hair is flying. I need to use this dead cat here in order to make you guys understand what I'm saying because it is so windy. And the gimbal, well, let's figure out ourselves how the gimbal does in such a rough surrounding. Secondly, if you want to take a look at some footage that has been not graded at all, not cut, not edited, no nothing, then you can download that for free and of course without a registration on tomstechtime.com slash Mavic Mini. If you want to play around with the footage yourself and see it uncompressed, because obviously YouTube always heavily compresses uploaded videos, then check out tomstechtime.com slash Mavic Mini, download some free files, check out the quality yourself and yeah, right now let's get this party started. I want to now with you take a look at the camera of the Mavic Mini. The coin-sized camera of the Mavic Mini holds a 1 over 2.3 inches CMOS sensor. That is almost a standard in drones nowadays, even most of the bigger models usually use the same sensor with a few exceptions only. The camera has a field of view of 83 degrees and a fixed aperture of 2.8. The Mavic Mini records in 2.7K at up to 30 frames per second and in Full HD you can even film slow motions with up to 60 frames per second. Unfortunately, 4K is not available. The camera's stabilization makes it extraordinary though, no one does stabilization as good as DJI and what is spectacular is that they applied the very same 3-axis mechanical stabilization to the Mavic Mini that they use with their larger drones that usually cost way more. Now even with such a tiny drone, you can film super stable aerials. That is a major leap in this category of miniature drones. You seriously can't call this a toy drone anymore, even though it looks like one, because its camera is just too advanced for that. The maximum video bitrate is 40 megabits per second and the tiny camera records mp4 files using the H.264 codec. What I am missing is color and picture style settings. There are none, just a standard mode. And I think the major downside is that I am missing the possibility to dial in manual camera settings, at least the ISO I would like to be able to control. In video mode, you are forced to use the camera's auto function. All in all though, the shots look pretty impressive for being recorded with a drone that has the size of an iPhone and obviously you cannot compare it to the one or two thousand dollar drones that DJI manufactures because in this category of drones, miniature drones, the Mavic Mini is king or queen. Well, I don't want to open up a gender debate here. You just choose. The Mavic Mini is equipped with four flight modes that will automatically create cinematic looking shots. The first one is named Drony. Then there is Rocket. And of course, the circle mode. And Helix is probably my favorite mode. The photos you can take with the Mavic Mini look better than expected because at first 12 megapixels photos at 4000 by 3000 pixels did not sound like a dream coming true to be honest. But somehow the photos do the job. On platforms like Instagram for example you can barely see the difference between a photo taken with this miniature drone compared to a photo taken with a larger model. Take a look at this print. Just a couple of hours ago I took this photo, I then ran to a store, asked them to print it out for me. And I must say that I'm quite happy with the result. The photo is overall sharp and there's nothing really to complain about here. 
Obviously, if you want to sell photos or if you want to make gigantic prints, then the Mavic Mini is obviously not your go-to choice. But if you are, I don't know, on holiday and you just want to make some wall prints for, I don't know, your living room, your sleeping room, then the Mavic Mini's camera is doing a better job than I expected. Looks pretty good. By the way, you can manually set up the camera in photo mode if you want. The camera has two photo modes, standard and interval between 2 and 60 seconds. The main disadvantage in photo mode is that you can only record JPEG, not raw photos with the Mavic Mini. In case you are into in-depth post-production, then this is something to bear in mind. Range and flight time are crucial. I could have now just shared the manufacturer's specs, 30 minutes of flight time and up to 4 kilometers of range with you, but well, you know, manufacturers tend to give you numbers that usually are not very realistic. They glean such numbers under ideal conditions, mild temperatures, no winds at all, etc. Therefore, I took the Mavic Mini to the test. I emptied the batteries several times under different conditions. Sometimes it was a bit windier, sometimes calmer, sometimes rather coolish and other times warmer. I wrote everything down and calculated an average flight time of about 28 minutes. Keeping in mind that a single battery has a maximum capacity of 2400 mAh only, the flight time is pretty impressive, even though it of course doesn't reach the time given by the manufacturer. The drone uses an advanced Wi-Fi connection. The controller looks familiar to DJI pilots, though very basic. No displays or inbuilt monitors can be found. Instead, the standard control sticks, a power and a return to home button, as well as a photo and a shutter button, a gimbal wheel, and of course, two antennas. That said, you should be able to fly the drone out as far as about 4 kilometers in the US and up to 2.5 kilometers in Europe due to the different transmission standards, CE and FCC. Okay, let's briefly sum it up. The five main advantages and disadvantages of the Mavic Mini. By the way, you can click on the product link in the description below the video if you want to check out the current pricing of the drone or of course, if you want to buy the drone right away. The main advantage for sure is the drone's size and weight. No more registration is a real strong argument. The fully stabilized camera is a giant leap in this category of drones. 2.7K is not 4K, I know, and I would have really preferred 4K as well, but 2.7K is already big news in this category of drones. I love the DIY kit. Creating a unique design is pretty cool, really a fun idea. Finally, the drone's in-flight behavior is awesome. Other miniature drones look pretty poor compared to the Mavic Mini because the Mavic Mini hovers and flies totally safely, it is easy to maneuver and handling the app is just a piece of cake. The main disadvantage is finally the app as well. After I just positively pointed it out for its general functions, it really lacks some fancy features. You can't even live stream to Facebook or YouTube. It truly annoys me too that DJI did not think of some quicker replacement system for the propellers. Always having to use the screwdriver takes time and if you ever forget about the screwdriver, then yeah well. All the ventilation openings are a downside. In my eyes, they make the drone a bit fragile. I really would not want to even fly the drone in the slightest rain. Of course, I get that DJI had to reduce the weight, but not having a redundant IMU and compass is a downside and I needed to point it out. Finally, not being able to set up the camera manually in video mode is a true bummer. And there we have them, the main advantages and disadvantages of the DJI Mavic Mini. I now almost forgot to mention one of the greatest advantages of the Mavic Mini and that is its flight time. Of course it does not reach the given 30 minutes, but 28 till 29 minutes of flight time are really possible. And that is pretty stunning for a drone of that size and I'm talking about flights under realistic normal circumstances with wind, with sometimes switching to flight mode, with recording videos, with taking some photos, it's pretty impressive. Now what's left to say? Of course the Mavic Mini is more of a point and shoot camera it is not a professional tool, but if you just look for, I don't know, like a backup drone or a very tiny drone that you don't have to register, then the Mavic Mini is probably the best that you can get for this price at the moment on the market. A product link can be found in the description below the video and way more drone information on tomstechtime.com. There is, by the way, a tool as well that you can download and with that tool, you can then find out which drone fits your needs in case that you're not totally happy with the Mavic Mini so far. Wow, the camera fell. Okay, okay.